Hello, hello everyone. It seems so long since I've seen you all in this terrible overhead lighting. Oh, as you can tell, I am not in the Sewing and Learning Center in uh, Oakville, Ontario. I am back in my home studio in Collingwood. Uh, and home studio is a good way to describe, um, oh, it's my uh, family room. It is in, uh, we're in a back split. So this is not really a basement, but it's a lower level. So it should be the family room, but it is my sewing room, my studio. So, yes. Uh, yes. Oh, fantastic. Debbie, I'm glad all is good there. Lovely. Hello. Oh, love your clock. Yes, thank you. My sister uh, got that for me. One of my sisters got that for me, which I thought was so adorable, so appropriate. And, you know, for the longest time, I didn't get a battery for it. And then just even that gentle little, you know, tick, tick, tick. Uh, when I was down here sewing, it's, uh, you know, when using the seam ripper when I'm not sewing. So it's quiet. And I'm like, no, it's too quiet. I need the tick, tick, tick of the, of the clock. And of course, I always think of my sister. And she's very sweet. Ah, oh, Celine. Oh, my word. It's been so long since I've seen you. Hello. And for anyone who doesn't know, uh, our fabulous Celine is our uh, Janome educator from uh, Montreal. So it's wonderful to be able to see you this way, Celine. Yes, Celine often views our Janome HQ Instagram lives, as I hope the rest of you do. Uh, but then if you don't see us uh, live, then hopefully, uh, again, you go on the Janome HQ YouTube channel, and then you can see the HQ uh, Instagram lives as videos on the Janome HQ YouTube channel. So yes, that is fabulous. Oh, hello, Kathy. Wonderful. Hello. Thank you, everyone, for joining me. Again, this is just a little impromptu live. I'm never really quite sure uh, with my crazy schedule when I'm going to be going live, but um, I'm here uh, at home again for the for the weekend, so I thought, oh, well, I'm doing a little bit of sewing, even though technically it's the weekend, <laughs> and I'm supposed to be off, but no, I'm always working, so then I thought, oh, I'm doing some sewing, and maybe I'll just go live and see what you all are up to on this. It's a beautiful Saturday here. Uh, I live in Collingwood, Ontario. That's about two hours north of Toronto, uh, in Canada, for uh, anyone who may not know, uh, you know, because we do have international viewers. Uh, but so, yeah, today was an absolute beautiful day. People were walking around in shorts, which I thought, wow, it's a nice day. But even I'm like, mm, I'm not tempting fate uh, by wearing shorts in November. Uh, but it was really beautiful today. So I hope you've all been having a wonderful Saturday. Hopefully doing some sewing. Uh, again, there never seems to be um, enough time for me to get caught up on it, so I don't know about all of you. Uh, you mm, yes, am I being paid double for a Saturday? Um, mm, what do you think? Uh, no, it's uh, luckily I love my job, so I don't mind. I'm being paid other ways. Certainly, I, uh, one of the big perks of my job is being able to uh, connect with all of you. So that I've been absolutely uh, adoring. That that's been a wonderful thing. Oh, a lovely hello! Oh my gosh, Amanda is here, and Mary Ann is here, and Anne Hine. Oh my gosh, our other fellow Janome educator. Uh, from the United States. Anne Hine is here. You'll all know Anne for um, the artistic digitizer. She is truly the artistic digitizer queen. Uh, she does all the artistic digitizer uh, Facebook uh, lives and presentations. So if any of you had signed up to the free trial for the artistic digitizer, uh, either here in the States or, or in Canada, um, or again, even around the world, those countries that were participating, uh, Anne has like spearheaded that whole artistic uh, digitizer movement and doing so much support. All the videos, if you haven't joined to the uh, Janome uh, Artistic Digitizer Facebook group, definitely do, because then Anne's got a ton of um, videos and tutorials for you. Uh, I must say, I try to tune in whenever I can too, because I'm still learning lots of Artistic Digitizer too. Uh, so yeah, so Anne, it's great to see you here. Uh, yes. Oh, fantastic. Uh, yes, and Amanda is our other uh, educator here from Ontario. And it is great to see you, Amanda. I know you're always catching up on sewing, too, uh, on the weekends, more than likely, and, uh, you know, all the time during the week. And, uh, yes, <laughs> I don't think she sleeps. I agree, Debbie. Uh, I don't think Anne sleeps because she is constantly doing uh, artistic digitizer videos, and then she sends us all emails with little tips and tricks. And, yeah, she really does an amazing job. Oh, and my niece Rain is here. Oh, my gosh, fantastic. 
Wow. Now, if any of you tuned in, oh, it was a couple of weeks ago I did the first uh, Genomi HQ Facebook Live. Uh, again, very impromptu. I was at the Sewing and Learning Center in Oakville, and I was doing some sewing on my niece, Sydney, my middle niece's uh, quilt. And then I decided, oh, I might as well go live and again connect with you all and see what are you up to and what are you doing on a Saturday. And then my eldest niece, Raven, joined in that presentation. And I went, oh my gosh, you know, Raven uh, had just had her birthday. Oh, it was October 17th then when I did that live and Raven's birthday was the 16th. And Raven is the reason I got into quilting in the first place. So I talked about a little bit of that. So how cool that my youngest niece, Rain, is watching. So that's wonderful. It's great to see you here, Rain. That is sweet. I'm hoping one of the girls, I have three nieces, um, I'm hoping one of them is going to really uh, fall in love with sewing at some point because uh, I need to leave all of this, all of this stuff <laughs> to somebody. Uh, you know, somebody needs to inherit all of this. Uh, here are some of my uh, UFOs uh, down here. I have some completed quilts. Ooh, like that flying geese quilt up there. That's completed. The quilts up there are completed. But starting over here with that hearts and gizzards quilt, and then this one is called apple cake, and there's a Dresden plate over there. Uh, these are the unfinished quilt tops, so I'm hoping to get those done eventually. Uh, but then, yes, one of these days... Um, somebody's going to inherit all this stuff. So maybe one of the girls. Oh, and Julian's here. Oh my gosh. Hello. Fantastic. Um, ooh, Amanda was making a minky blanket. Ooh, minky is a tricky beast. Uh, so I have heard. I have never actually used it myself because I know you look at it and it just stretches all over the place. And then you cut it and then there is fuzz everywhere. <laughs> uh, but I know a lot of people love using it in their uh, quilts for their quilt backings in particular. Uh, you know, especially baby quilts, you know, so cuddly. So, uh, Amanda, you can share with us uh, some tips then um, anytime I want to make a minky blanket or, again, any of us on Genome HQ, if there's a project coming up, then I'll definitely be asking you for some tips for some uh, using minky. So, yes, lovely. Yes, hello, Julian. It's fabulous to see you. Uh, yeah, so what I am doing here, again, uh, an impromptu Facebook uh, Live, but I thought I would uh, share with you all, if you've been a regular viewer of our, again, Genome HQ Instagram Lives, I've hinted a couple of times that we are doing this um, new, uh, like, holiday decorating program uh, thing at our office, you know, because normally for Genome, we'd be going out uh, to a restaurant uh, to have our staff Christmas dinner. But uh, because of COVID, obviously, we're not going to be doing that. And then, you know, we do have uh, educators, again, like Celine in Montreal, and then uh, Liz and uh, Anne margaret are um, in uh, Vancouver, and Aaron's in Calgary, and, uh, you know, and even Amanda's in, in uh, Binbrook, Ontario. But, uh, you know, again, nobody's really traveling. So then we thought, okay, we will have a Christmas dinner in our office, and we're going to transform our office space into uh, our, our uh, dinner space and, and bring in tables. And then um, I'm sewing a lot of the table linens, table runners, the placemats. Uh, I've got some ideas for some little quick, easy uh, gifts that you could do, last minute gifts, uh, some fun projects as well that you can do with some of your um, sewing notions and presser feet and all that. So we've got lots in the works uh, on the go uh, for you. And you know, for those uh, of our educators and, and our staff, you know, our, our vice president's in um, you know California, and so he's not gonna be there with us. And our sales rep, you know, Lynn, she's in um, Quebec City, so uh, again, she's not going to be traveling. So then we're going to though set a place at the table for all of our Genome staff then. And um, we've got iPads so then they can have a place at the table via iPad. Because again, we're now all doing everything online, uh, you know, with all of our, you know, Zoom and Skype and all of that kind of stuff. And I've been uh, just started online classes from the Genome Sewing and Learning Center. Yay. Uh, so then that yeah, yeah, we're doing a lot of stuff again online and here we are in Facebook Live doing online. So we're going to be um, still being able to share the Genomi love with all of our Genomi Canada team 
uh, even if they may not be together in person. So then this is what we're uh, going to then be sharing over the next couple of weeks. So these are the things that I'll be doing for Facebook Lives. And again, I'll turn this into a video for the Genomi HQ YouTube channel if you're not able to tune in live. And then I'll post pictures on, on the Genomi HQ Facebook page. So hopefully you will tune in uh, there as well and see what we're up to and what fabulous Genomi goodies we're using and things to make all the jobs easier. Oh, and Paige is here. Hello. Paige is one of our fabulous Genomi dealers. Hello. Uh, let me see. Let me... So now that I feel like I've introduced everybody, oh, I should say, my name is Michael Smith. <laughs> I'm the National Consumer Education Manager of Genomi Canada. I think all of you know that, but just in case you're maybe tuning in for the first time, it's always nice ooh, to see the whole big Genomi family. So yeah, so here when we're talking about doing ooh, some yarn couching, now I don't know if any of you have done yarn couching. I know like Celine, you have and uh, Anne, I'm, I know you have, but um, yes, the yarn couching is really very fun. I am using the uh, free motion couching foot. It's for high shank machines. So I've got a nine millimeter machine here with our fabulous, ooh, uh, Continental M7 here is nine millimeters, but this will also work with uh, high shank seven millimeter machines as well. And what the free motion couching foot uh, looks like this, available in a blister pack. And fortunately, like all Janome feet, all the instructions are written here at the back of the blister pack. And as you open up, again, more instructions inside. So you're never at a loss on exactly what to do, how to use this foot. Most importantly, they tell you uh, the size of your zigzag stitch. Because what we're doing, couching is basically, it's um, a French term uh, that it is, we're basically zigzagging yarn onto uh, this other fabric. And there's two different sizes of feet. I have the big one. Ooh, there's the little one. And you'll see the there's different size openings here that will accommodate different sizes of yarn. So I have the larger one on my foot right now. And then again, this one is for skinnier, uh, thinner cords. Uh, you don't want to use anything too stiff. Uh, nothing like the soutache cord or the rat tail cording. That would be too stiff. But any kind of like yarn or thin uh, cotton, you know, string or something like that. Uh, would be totally fine. And then again, you're just going to zigzag it on your fabric. Now the fabric I'm using, oh, and Heidi is here. Hello. I hope you're having a fabulous Saturday. Uh, so the fabric I'm using, these again are going to be for our, our holiday decor to our office. Uh, the fabric is actually, uh, these are ready made table runners that I purchased at the uh, big discount store, the big D store that's in many, many towns. And again, it's, it's you know, quite beautiful already. It's got this little bit of silver. Um, they're like little gluey dots of, of silver, basically. So it kind of decorates the fabric. Again, nothing um, that expensive by any means. So again, how great is that? And what I like doing a lot of times, you know, if I had all the time in the world, oh, I would be making everything from scratch. And I will be making a lot of holiday projects which again, I'm going to be sharing in uh, Facebook Lives for Genomi HQ. So I would normally like to start from scratch at all times. But again, I don't always have that time. And especially as we're going to the crunch before Christmas. Uh, so here I'm taking a ready-made table runner. And then what I am doing is couching this yarn. I'm zigzagging this yarn. And I'm following all these little curly cues in the in the design already so i don't have to draw i don't have to think of doing anything you know a lot of people say oh i'm not creative i, I can't draw and i say well get a fabric that has a, a cool print on it so in this case it was you know stamped on uh so i'm just following the 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 print that's already in the fabric so that way i don't need to worry about marking my fabric and i don't need to worry about drawing anything so ooh. I don't want to move the camera too much uh, on you all. Uh, but yeah, so it's very easy to do. I have in this case, because I've got black with a little bit of gold, there's a little bit of gold in this yarn. And again, in our holiday decor, 
We're doing uh, black and white and a little bit of mint green and some accents of like silver and little bits of gold. So just a little bit of gold. We didn't really want to do too much gold. We didn't really want to do, you know, traditional holiday decor. So uh, that's why I thought using this yarn would be good because it's just got those little bit of accents of gold. And again, just by following this uh, print on the fabric is so simple. Now, the nice thing is I've got sewing applications in the Continental M7 here. And what sewing applications is, is that little t-shirt. <laughs> uh, they're called sewing applications. And when I select my t-shirt, the machine is basically asking me, well, what do you want to do? So I said, oh, there is a selection, free motion couching. So I said, oh, I wanted to do free motion couching. So I hit that button and boom, the machine is already set up for me. And again, I mentioned about the zigzag width being very important. The blister pack tells us nothing wider than 1.5. Ask me how I know <laughs> why that's important. Uh, uh, when using this free motion couching foot without a machine with sewing applications, I had forgotten about that 1.5 uh, inch uh, or that 1.5 millimeter wide zigzag. So um, yes, it's important that you follow the, the instructions on the blister back. But again, this is why I love having sewing applications, the little t-shirt built into many of our Janome machines because the machine is already set up for you. So it's actually kind of less thinking uh, that you have to do, uh, which is wonderful. <laughs> oh, you know what I noticed too? My clock has not reset for daylight savings times. It's really 5.11, right? Or 5.12 now? Yes, my, my clock on the M7 hasn't reset yet. Uh, I love having the clock on the machine because you know when you say, oh, I'm just going to go down in my sewing room for five minutes. And all of a sudden, you know, an hour goes by. And that's when my partner, Joe, yells from upstairs, um, are you going to be much longer? And it's like, oh yeah, I was only supposed to be here a few minutes. Uh, but yeah, so couching is very simple. So I'm just going to go around and follow my fabric. This is all um, free motion. So if you don't have sewing applications for your machine, then basically what you want to do is drop your feed dogs and set to that narrow 1.5 width of your zigzag. And then all I'm doing in this case, again, is just following my fabric. I love wearing these uh, rubbery gloves. Uh, they're not Janome gloves, but you can find them um, in any, uh, you know, uh, fabric store, quilt shop uh, probably has them. They've got these like rubbery grips on the fingers. So uh, it really helps me grip the fabric and move it around. The nice thing about doing free motion, either couching or when we use our rulers, you know, that's also free motion, uh, that we can really move the fabric in any way, but I find it really works out best. You really don't need to manipulate the fabric by twisting it around or anything. I keep the fabric oriented in the same direction the whole time that I'm quilting, and it really turns out just great. Now you want to make sure when you're free motion couching that you have like a good amount of slack in your yarn. I like even um, just looping it up here over my bobbin holder uh, that I would use to, you know, wind my bobbins. And then actually I have the rest of it down in, ooh, can you even see? This is, nor it's a big pickle pail uh, from a restaurant. This is normally my garbage, but instead I put my big ball of yarn. It was a giant yarn, a uh, giant ball of yarn. So I just put it there in the bucket. So then that way it feeds very easily because uh, then you just don't want this yarn to go very taut. Uh, if it pulls taut, as particularly around corners, then it's not going to catch as much. Uh, I may have some examples. Ooh, ooh, I'm trying to find. Uh, there was a couple of little spots. Oh, just when I got started. There was a couple of little spots right there. So again, my, my yarn pulled a little bit too tight. And then there, it didn't catch. The zigzag didn't catch. But well, the one thing I love, free motion couching, and one thing I love about it is so free. Oh, there's another spot that, again, it pulled too tight. I was a little too fast. 
Uh, so it didn't catch. But the wonderful thing is once I'm done all of this, I'm going to clip my yarn and then I'm going to go back just with my regular black thread and I'm just going to zigzag over that little bit and I'm just going to zigzag over that little bit. And you're not even going to know it. You're not going to see it at all. It's a, it's a lofty yarn. So the stitches just bury into uh, the yarn I had thought at first, oh, maybe I should use a fancy gold metallic, you know, Madeira thread that I love using, the Madeira metallics. But then I thought that's really quite a waste because the, the yarn is so lofty that that metallic gold thread is really going to get lost. So I'm just using regular uh, black thread. In fact, this is our 60 weight Janome pre-wounds. I love using these the, because, again, they're so handy. They come in uh, black and white. So I'm just using regular polyester thread. Again, nothing fancy because it's all just going to get uh, buried into that yarn. So uh, again, if you happen to miss anything, just uh, cut your yarn and then go back with just your thread and then you'll be able to catch it uh, more easily. So really super simple. And then, oh, in some spots I'm going over twice as I go up into a, a little curl, then I'm uh, going up into the curl, into the point. I can just stop and take some yarn out. Uh, so then, yes, I'm going up into that little curl and then I'm going right back down again. So it builds it up. It's a little bit thicker. And that way, if I ooh, don't happen to catch some of that little silver design that's printed on the fabric, uh, by having that extra row of yarn, then that really uh, helps uh, disguise it. So I can really help cover it. So it's a really, really fun te uh, technique. Very freeing, very relaxing. This is the perfect kind of sewing to do on a Saturday. Especially after... Um, some events that have been going on in the world. Um, <laughs> you know, normally I don't get too political and, and I won't hear either, but you know what events have been going on in the world. So it's uh, very nice to have a, a good stress reliever like this. Uh, and again, something that's very forgiving. There's times that our sewing, you know, we want it to be so perfect and so precise, but then at other times you just want something fun and more freeing. Now, this is a good opportunity to say again why I love this, because then this little bit of the design over here, uh, I sort of worked myself out and went around and did all of this and I went up and everything, but it's like, oh, I got this little bit of a design that I have left to do. So I could go back and, and you know, backtrack what I've already done, like back here, and then I could go here and catch it. Or, you know, sometimes what I've been doing is I've been coming along here and just like jumping over. There isn't technically a, a you know, the design wasn't printed right here on the fabric, but with your yarn couching, you can just totally fake it. <laughs> so it's really forgiving that way. Uh, as it is, I am going to go back. I am going to, whoops, pull a little bit more so it's not taut. Uh, I am going to go back because, again, I'm trying to like kind of double up my yarn. I, I do like it more. It's a personal preference, but I do like it more uh, thick and more pronounced. Now, these are not going to be table runners, even though they started that way. Uh, again, from the discount store, they were labeled table runners. But I decided, oh no, I'm not going to use them as table runners. What these are actually going to be is over the back of our chairs. We've got, you know, just plain, regular, uh, these gray, uh, like office chairs. Again, nothing fancy. But picture this draped, you know, and they're, they're at a point on each end. So picture this draped over the back of these plain gray office chairs and it's going to transform them so this is why as well i could have more dimension on the yarn because i know this isn't going to be a table runner i don't have to worry about you know setting something down here like a glass and it's going to be uneven and all that uh this is going to be at a over the backs of the chairs and it, so it's actually going to be quite soft and quite comfortable <laughs> so i think that would be a cool thing too so again now that i'm up here i think oh i'm i'm kind of trapped you know where should i go i could cut my yarn and i could cut my 
my thread and start at another position. But instead, I don't want to do that. I'm just going to go back over an area I already did. I'm not going to stress over it. And I'm just going to come out here to the side. And then I decided I'm going to go down because I wanted a, a traveling point. So I'm going to go down the side of each of these runners. And then that will allow me, again, like a traveling point to get down to where I want to go. Trying to be... So, yes, isn't that cool? Oh, hello from Montreal. Are you using a blue needle for this? Oh, actually, thank you for the question. That's a great question. Uh, I am using our fabulous uh, purple tip needle, Janome purple tip needle, uh, which ooh, looks like this. It's a size 14. And the cool thing about the purple tip needles, they have this flared head, as we call it. Uh, just before you get to the eye of the needle, there is the flare of the head. Uh, when you picture a cobra, uh, a snake, then this is what we call the cobra head uh, because it's got that flared head just before the eye. So that helps separate the fibers of the fabric so then your needle thread can come down and grab the bobbin thread more readily. So they're really great to use uh, if ever you're getting skip stitches in any kind of sewing, uh, free motion quilting or or again just regular sewing, uh, the um, purple tip needles will eliminate the skip stitches because of that flared head uh, again uh, separating the fibers of your fabric so they can reach down and grab the bobbin thread. Uh, more readily, so that'll stop the skipping. So I decided to use the purple tip needle again because um, it's also a, a sharper point. Uh, and then I'm going through this, uh, you know, thicker fabric. It's already lined. It's all beautiful. So I don't need to worry as well about using a stabilizer or anything to support my stitches because I already have the the stiffer fabric here of the table runner and of the lining. Now no one's going to see the back side anyway, so it's all the front side we're um, interested in, but on the back side it's just a little zigzag. Again, it's all free motion, so it's a little weird ziggy zag because it is free motion, so you want to uh, try to just be consistent. You don't have to run a race with this. Uh, you know, our Continental M7 stitches uh, 1300 stitches a minute, but uh, I find for something like this, oh, I really don't need to go that fast. I can, I, I rather just stitch uh, at a consistent speed and that, that'll help your yarn um, catch better as well. And particularly around curves. And this is the same applies again, because this is free motioning. So when those that are free motion quilting and they say, oh, I get these weird eyelashes or again, these skip stitches, uh, particularly going around curves, it's generally because you're going too fast, you need to slow down. Uh, I like to uh, rev up the speed of my machine, but I move my hands a little bit slower. Uh, but again, in this case, I'm not going super, super fast. I could uh, control the speed dial as well. I could turn that down too. So it's a little bit more like of a, of a medium speed. But it's very forgiving. And it's so fun, again, that you can decorate anything, uh, basically, just by adding whatever kind of yarn. Uh, I demoed the free motion couching foot I believe it was in the Janome's Awesome Accessory Countdown, which was the Instagram Lives, but again, they're now all on Janome HQ Facebook, or sorry, Janome HQ YouTube channel. Uh, but yes, I believe it was part of that series on the Janome HQ YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, which I hope you all will, um, I have uh, several playlists. And I, there's a playlist of A to Z with Janome. So that I went over many of the presser feet and accessories, uh, what they're all for, how to use them. And then our second series was Janome's Awesome Accessory Countdown. And I went over 12 awesome presser feet and accessories on, again, how to demo them. I believe this was number two in that the free motion couch and foot, I think, was number two in the Janome's Awesome Accessory Countdown. 
can, it's, uh, it's a lot to remember. <laughs> and then our current uh, Janome HQ Instagram series is called uh, Janome's Magical Machine Mystery Tour, where I go over every Wednesday at 1 p.m. I'm going over uh, different machines in the Janome line. Of those machines I can get my hands on. <laughs> Because uh, as you probably all know, you know, yes, with the uh, pandemic and, and more people sewing than ever, uh, every sewing machine manufacturer, I believe, is all out of machine, or again, supply, we're not out completely, but, you know, supply is, uh, is very low, or again, it's taking a while to get here to replenish because everybody was sewing and making masks and then realizing, hey, this sewing is very fun. There's so much you can do. So it's great to see this resurgence. It's kind of sad the reason why we're all doing it, but again, it's great to see the resurgence and more people sewing than ever. And again, buying all this fabric to make mass and then they want to do something with the scraps. And uh, I started uh, quilting, for example, again, when my eldest niece was born. And I wanted to give her something for Christmas and to, you know, uh, she was born in October. And then for the Christmas, I wanted to do something and didn't really have a whole lot of money, but I had a whole lot of garment scraps. I studied fashion design at the time, so I had all these garment scraps. So I stumbled onto a quilting program on TV uh, called Quilt in a Day. Maybe some of you know it with uh, Eleanor Burns. And I totally fell in love with crazy Eleanor Burns and, and quilting and uh, totally gave away probably my first 40 quilts because I love making things and then giving it to others. It's really a lot of fun and then of course I love to see their joy in receiving something that was handmade just for them and something hopefully that's going to be lasting a long time. So as you can see, I could just go on forever. Like, well, and I'm going to <laughs> until these are done. And I have quite a few uh, chairs uh, to cover. So I'm definitely going to be at this for a while. But uh, in the meanwhile, I thought it would be fun to come on and say hi and see what everybody is up to. And especially, I hope you're enjoying your beautiful Saturday. Hopefully it was good weather where all of you are. I know some people have already gotten snow. So, ooh. You know, those of you who are skiers will probably love that. Uh, me personally, um, I'm not big into snow. Oh my gosh, Lisa. Hello. Hello. How are you? Oh, it's wonderful to see people here. Uh, yes. Uh, should I introduce everyone? Uh, Lisa and I were um, high school friends way back in high school and lived together in our uh in what my second year of college it was her first year i believe uh way back when speaking of you know college when i studied fashion design so it's amazing this is why i love you know facebook and social media and all that because we can really stay connected and you know connect with people all over the world uh and i see oh susan is from the uk yeah so we're literally all over the world sharing the janome love and spending some time together again on this beautiful Saturday. So I'm going to, oh, and Faith Wilson, hello. It is great to see you all. So again, I was just doing some yarn couching on the fabulous Continental M7 here. So look for this uh, Facebook Live to become a video on the Janome HQ YouTube channel. And then uh, yes, hopefully you'll all follow the Janome HQ uh, Facebook page and Janome HQ ooh, YouTube channel. So then you can see the whole process as we do all of our holiday decorating over the next couple of weeks. And again, little tips and tricks on uh, some last minute gifts or what you could do for your ooh, favorite, you know, sewing friend, uh, some fabulous gifts uh, that you can do for them. Um, again, something a little bit extra special. So yes, we've got lots to plan for you. So enjoy the rest of your Saturday though. I will let you all off, uh, you know, go off and 
I'll finish my sewing and I will see you all uh, coming up on another Genomi HQ Facebook Live. Uh, I think I'll stick to Saturday afternoons or maybe occasionally do a, an evening here or there. I know everybody's got different schedules, again, especially around the world. <laughs> so yes, uh, any chance we get to share the Genomi love. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's wonderful to have some company here in my sewing room. Uh, it was great to see you all. Oh, goodbye, Anne. Thank you again for all of your fabulous artistic digitizer knowledge and knowledge in general of everything. And yes, my adorable Celine as well. Thank you. And have fun with all your sewing today. And I will see you all again soon. Bye.